Hi students, welcome to Easy Elimu Learning Simplified. My name is Mbide and in today's session, we are going to learn about writing a parking list. We are going to see or have a look at some tips to help us write an effective and efficient parking list. What are some of the things that should not miss in your parking list? What are some of the things that can guide you um, as you're coming up with your parking list so that it is brief but also detailed and it is not overcrowded but it has everything that you need? So having a parking list with you when you're traveling, whether it is a long distance, it is a short distance, you could be going for a school trip for two days or a week. Maybe you're going for drama festivals, music festivals, you're going for a vacation, maybe to the coast, to the Masai Mara, wherever it is that you're going. As long as you're going for a few days, it is important to have a list, what we call a parking list, of the things that you're going to carry, the things you're going to need. This will help you be very, very organized. It will help you to avoid carrying unnecessary stuff, and it will also help you not forget the necessary stuff, the important stuff. Because, for example, you're going for music festivals. Maybe you're the chair for the drama team in your school or the music team. So you will have your parking list for your personal things and also for the things that the team needs so that you're not uh, at music festivals and you didn't carry your props because you forgot. So a parking list will help you be very, very organized. It will help you not forget. It will help you not overpack and pack unnecessary things that uh, you're not going to use. So we are going to have a look at a few tips or a few things to consider when writing a packing list. These are things that are going to help you um, help you have an, a, a packing list that is detailed but also not overcrowded so that it doesn't confuse you. The first thing is to have the title. For example, if you're packing for a trip to Masai Mara, that can be your title. Packing list for Masai Mara trip. Packing list for music festivals in Kisumu, in Mombasa. So that is the title. And then after the title, you can have subtitles or subheadings. Now, when we look at the sample of a parking list, you're going to see what I mean when I say subtitles, but you can categorize your items. Whatever it is that you're carrying, you can categorize. So you can have clothes, that is a subtitle on its own. Shoes, that is a subtitle on its own. Toiletries, that is a subtitle on its own. Maybe gadgets, that is a subtitle on its own. Props, that is a subtitle on its own so after you have your title you have your subtitles it is important to also have the quantity so if you've said you're going to carry shirts how many shirts are you carrying and you knowing the quantity will be determined by how many days will you be wherever it is that you're going so if it's a five day trip how many shirts do you need how many slippers do you need? How many rubber shoes um, do you need? So the quantity will be determined by how many days will you be there? That will help you know uh, how many things to pack so that you don't overpack or you don't underpack. So it is also important to be as specific as possible. So don't just write two shirts or three shirts. Which shirt? Is it the green one that is long sleeved, the white one that is short sleeved? Be as specific 
as possible. If it is a pair of slippers, you can write the blue ones, the red ones, the new ones, the old ones. So be as specific as possible. This helps you not forget or not pack the wrong thing. And lastly, give enough details to distinguish one item from the others. This is just an emphasis of what I said in the previous slide. So give enough details. Now, something that can help you is if you know where you're going. For example, you, uh, you're going uh, to Mombasa for a trip. You can also do prior research of the weather there. How is the weather? Is that a cold place? Is it a hot place? So, you know, for example, Mombasa is quite hot. So you may not need to carry jumpers and hoodies because you won't wear them because of the weather. But if you're going to Limuru, you will need jackets. You will need jumpers. So even before you start writing your packing list, uh, it is important to have done prior research of where am I going, how is the weather. The weather will also help you know what kind of clothes, even shoes to carry. Maybe it is a place, maybe it is during the rainy season. Sandals and slippers may not be the best. Maybe you need gumboots. So this prior research can help you. Uh, know what to pack so that you don't pack good items but for the wrong place. So we are going to have a look at a sample of a packing list and as we go through it, um, please try and see if it, it has the tips that we have just talked about, if it is a detailed packing list, if someone gave you this list and asked you to pack for them would you be able to do it? Is it specific? Is it ambiguous? Have a look as we go through it. So when you look at this packing list, it is in the form of a table that has item, type, quantity, and description. Item number one is clothes. And in the clothes, this type number one is shirts. The quantity is three, and the three have been described there. The old yellow one, the new green one, the blue short-sleeved one. And then we also have under clothes, we also have towel, one towel, the blue one. The second item is shoes, and here it has been written, slippers one pair the red ones the third item is cosmetics body lotion one bottle nivea hair food one bottle olive hairspray and lastly we have toothpaste colgate one tube the 500 grams one if somebody gave you this list and asked you to pack for them would it be easy for you to pack the items that have been written here or would you struggle is it has it been described well is it detailed or is there something that needs to be added so this is an example of a packing list that is well detailed it is not crowded. There are not too many stories. It is not crowded, but it has everything. It has everything. So even when you're going to pack, you know you're going to start with clothes. Uh, you need shirts. You need a towel. Maybe you need a, a pair of shorts. You include them all there. So this is how a packing list should be. Very, very specific. You can see in the description the yellow one. So if someone sends you to pack for them, you know you'll open their closet and look for a yellow shirt because that is what has been written. So that's it for packing list. I hope you have understood and if given an assignment to write a packing list, you're able to do it. So for further practice, you can have a look at the quiz. 
Imagine you are going for a trip to the Nairobi National Park for five days. Write a parking list of the things that you will require. When you look at this question, there are things that you've already been told. Number one, it is Nairobi National Park. That is the venue. So you can do research. How is the weather right now? To know, do you need heavy clothes? Do you need light clothes? Do you need slippers or closed shoes? And also it is for five days. So you need items that will carry you through the five days. Clothes that you will wear for the five days. You can uh, have a look at that and attempt to write a, um, a parking list and follow the structure that we saw in the uh, sample parking list that we have just looked at.